Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. We're here in Boston. We made it, you guys. <laughs> Our plan is to go all over this city, see the sights, squeeze in as much as we can. We're basically going to have our perfect weekend here in Boston. Yeah, Boston is actually known for a ton of great markets that we are definitely going to be hitting up today. But we are starting with maybe the very best and most famous market. That's right. It's Boston Market. Oh yeah. My God, guys, I am so friggin' excited. I know, I'm so hungry. Let's go eat at the market. We're just kidding. <laughs> this was her idea. <laughs> was that funny? We came all the way out to a Boston Market just to do that gag. Uh, just so you know, there aren't really any in Boston. Yeah, we're way outside of Boston. I don't know, like an hour is out of Boston. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> think we were actually going to just eat at a Boston market? <laughs> Not that I'm against it. I've but... never even been to a Boston market. Is not any good? Leave a it comment. Is. Let us know. I used to go out when I was a kid. But that is right. Today we are going to be going all over the city of Boston. We are going to be eating. We are going to be seeing the sights. There's so much history in this city, as you can imagine, and we absolutely love history. If you were keeping up with the channel, we recently did a road trip up through New Hampshire. Eric got very sick at the end of that. Some yeah. nasty, like, sinus cold Yeah, thing. I went out and got a COVID test, and it was negative. It was so it negative. was not COVID. But man, I was uh, in bed for about two weeks. So we've yeah. just been hunkered down here in Boston, going from Airbnb to Airbnb, waiting for me to be yes. ready to go out and actually do something. <laughs> I have not been sick, so I'm very excited to be out of the yes. apartment and actually doing something She's finally. been a trooper, though. She's been taking <laughs> care of me and staying positive through the whole thing. Yes. So there are a bunch of different markets here in Boston. The one that we came to today is the Boston Public Market. This is not one of the older markets. This is kind of a newer market. It was started in 2015, but it has so much stuff in here. They have all these little trinkets. They have like some glass ornament things hanging over there. They have all sorts of delicious food like Allison mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one nice thing is it's raining outside. This is covered and indoors, which I'm a fan of. All right, most epic, awesome, amazing, incredible, insert more adjectives, day in Boston starts right now. <laughs> cool thing about this market is everything is supposed to be sourced locally from New England so a lot of the stations actually tell you exactly where your food is coming from it's like you're meeting the people who are catching your fish or making your bagels or growing your plants and then selling it right here to you you guys this place is incredible it's very very hard to make a decision on what to eat but we got quite a spread. We got Dutch babies. We got little popover things. We got bagel sandwich. Tons of delicious cold brew. This day's starting off on the right foot. <laughs> Do I still sound a little sick? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm yeah. still a little nasally. I promise I'm pretty much over it. It's been like two weeks now, right? So this beauty right here is a Dutch baby. If you guys recall, we have had these before in uh, Seattle, I think is where we got them. But basically these are cooked in cast iron. They're baked in the oven actually. And then they kind of rise up a little bit and then deflate. And this one, she filled with uh, some eggs, some bacon, put a little cheese on top, and a little hot sauce. The perfect, delicious bite. Man, it's so fluffy. Is this too big of a bite? <laughs> always. It's always too big of a bite. Almost too big. <laughs> this is just a wonderfully delightful breakfast. It's just so light and airy inside there. You can see it's mostly just air inside there, so there's really not that much pastry to it. But it's nice and buttery, it's moist. You've got the nice fluffy egg on there. Couldn't really ask for more for breakfast. This is from a shop called The Popover Lady, and she makes these little guys popovers, which are basically, I guess they're like Yorkshire pudding, which Yorkshire pudding, I guess, is also similar to a Dutch baby, but you, you bake it and it kind of like spills over and then kind of deflates. I had my eye on something else, a bagel. <laughs> I read that the bagel shop in here is pretty good, so this is a salted rosemary bagel. If you notice all the steam behind Eric and his shot, they're like boiling the bagels before they bake them over there. I could be a little healthier. It's roasted sweet potato, spring mix, apples, and cream cheese on a salted, ro on a salted herb bagel. <laughs> to finally be out and about again. I know, you're alive. <laughs> If 
before we left, I convinced Eric to try donuts from the little cider barn over here. They have this awesome donut making machine that like plops the little donuts down into the hot oil. It just sends it like on a little luge as they cook and flips them over and then it dumps them out into the sugar mix at the end. Oh my God. It's, it's super cool. It's so cool. We were watching it for way too long. I think they were kind of getting weirded out by us, but I got one blaze and then one cinnamon sugar. I'm trying this one because it's hot off the presses. Oh my God. <laughs> like melts in your mouth. Holy snap. So I'm probably just gonna eat both of these and you can go get your own, please. No. <laughs> this one's mine. It's like a little chewy in there, but it's really airy as well. There's like a perfect mixture of the cinnamon and sugar. It's sweet, but the donut itself is not too sweet. A little hint of the apple cider in there. Oh. Donut yeah. cheers. Donut cheers. <laughs> All right, on to the next stop. As I mentioned, there are a bunch of different markets in Boston. So if you don't fancy the Boston public market, you can come to Quincy Market. This market is much, much older than that one. This was constructed in 1826. That one was 2015. <laughs> but we figured this isn't more of the touristy area. We wanted to go to the one that we haven't been to before because we have been to this one before. Well, one thing's for sure, this market is way busier and louder than the other one. It's also decked out for Christmas and I am loving it. Next up, we are doing a very special kind of tour. And for some reason, they're making us print our tickets before we can do it. So we hopped into a UPS. Yeah. Also, what do you guys think of my mask? <laughs> so merry. I hear it. And voila. <laughs> I guess we'll see you there. All right, y'all, our tour is about to begin. We're right across from the Boston Commons Visitor Center where it's gonna start. But we had some time to fill, so we came to the Thinking Cup, which is a cafe chain that they have in Boston. Yeah. What else and got? <laughs> it's, oops. <laughs> well, this half, it's coffee marinated chicken, I believe, barbecue sauce, house-made pickles, gouda cheese. It is a little spicy and delicious and so much better than what Eric got. Yeah, I got a quiche. But this is a phenomenal sandwich. So if you it's come so here, good. get that sandwich. Also, but. Boston, I've noticed you guys have some legit local chains. The Pavement Coffee, Thinking Cup, Tate. Yeah. We're loving them all. And we're gonna link to all of those and everything that we do in this video in the description below. So you can recreate our awesome time here in Boston. Speaking of having an awesome time, we are not only taking a tour of downtown Boston, we are also going to be led by somebody who should be dressed up in historical garb. <laughs> and if they're not, I'm gonna be very angry. Yes. <laughs> Allow me to officially introduce myself. My name is Dr. Samuel Prescott. A little bit about myself. I was born in the year 1751, which now makes me 270 years old. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I know what you're thinking. You think, Doc, you don't look a day over 250. I get that a lot. Thank you. Y'all believe it or not, back in the day, this was not what Boston looked like. It was this little peninsula that came down to a point right about here, and it would actually get covered in water and cut off from the rest of the land. But they leveled out a bunch of hills and took all the dirt and filled all of this in. Yeah, so we'll put a map on the screen right now so you can see just how much of Boston was actually land filled in. Yeah. So this whole area where we've been spending the last couple weeks uh -huh. was underwater. Back Bay used to actually be the Back Bay, and now it's a neighborhood. <laughs> That's wild. Pretty fascinating. Yeah. All right, we gotta catch up to our tour group. <laughs> Our tour is well underway. We are actually walking along the old Freedom Trail here in Boston, which is a 2.5 mile trail that you can follow that takes you through all these different historic landmarks of stuff that's happened in the history of Boston. One of them is this. This is the Granary Burial Ground, and this place is creepy but also awesome at the same time. It is a very small little area, but it's estimated that there's 
5,000 to 10,000 bodies buried here. There are people literally everywhere underneath where we are now in every single corner of this area. These gravestones do not actually represent where the people are buried. What happened was this was a burial ground. So that means they just buried people everywhere back in the day. And then eventually they tried to make it look more like a cemetery. So they literally just took all the gravestones, lined them all up like this. So there's just piles upon piles of bodies buried beneath our feet right now. <laughs> Some of these bodies are very notable people. We have a one Samuel Adams buried right over there. Way back there, we have Paul Revere. Maybe you've heard of that guy, I don't know. Probably the most uh, impressive statue is for Mr. John Hancock over there. <laughs> but we need to go catch up with our tour group. We keep stopping to do these little talking bits and losing them. But then we're going to take in a little bit more history and then probably eat some delicious food. Yes, please. Something warm, please. <laughs> yeah, it's very cold out here, you guys. We had a ton of fun on our tour. We learned a lot. We saw a lot more of the city and appreciated a lot more. Last time we came, we just kind of did our history lesson on our own. So it was nice having a local show us around. Plus he was dressed appropriately, which was huge bonus points. But we haven't quite had our fill of history and you can't come to Boston and not have a tea party, right? <laughs> so we figured it killed two birds with one stone at the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. I don't know why they say ships and museum, but... Let's go find out. Yeah. There is a ship right over there. Let's go get shipped and museum. <laughs> you guys, I have a role. I'm going to be a one. Thomas Porter. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. We're having, we're doing a real reenactment of the tea party, I guess. Not always the best combination. Good luck tonight, sir. I am John Crane, uh, characterized as strong yet clumsy. <laughs> This is gonna be fun. I'm that's, excited. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> now tonight is the 16th of December in 1773, and I'm sure all of you, like I, have already grown sick and tired of all of these talks and negotiations. Huzzah! Now, I do say, Parliament has not only taxed our paper and our ink; they've even taxed our playing cards and our dice. Oh! Tyranny. Thank you, sir. Hey. We are headed to the ship. We are about to dump tea into this harbor. We're so angry. Oh, as we walk, people start gathering with us. Dump the tea into, into the, the sea. sea. Dump the tea. Into, into the, the sea. sea. You are here to cast off the yoke of parliamentary tyranny. Say aye. 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 You are here to be caught and arrested for treason. Say aye. aye. <laughs> Excellent, my friends. I'm glad you're listening, of course. Yeah. Three, two, one. Over the side. to be seen again. Stop looking. Stop looking. <laughs> We've officially dumped the tea. Now we're getting a tour of the ship. So this is like a replica of what one of the ships would have looked like. One of the three that they dumped the tea off of. Man, it is tiny and seems pretty rough. The sea life is not for me, especially in the 1700s. It's not for me today, really. <laughs> officially destroyed all of the tea. We have done our duty. And now the only thing left to do is, I guess, try the types of teas we destroyed. I don't know, apparently these are the five types of tea that would have been on the ships that night. And when you're done with your tour, you can taste them. Pretty fitting. One of these teas is called Su Chong, I think. And it might be the weirdest tea I've ever tasted in my life. It smells of a bonfire. It smells like a burning log, don't you think? And it tastes like a burning log, too. It tastes like the smell of barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not good either. <laughs> I guess that's it. <laughs> talk over the loud, very commercial music so we don't get a copyright strike. It was Taylor Swift and then Lauren. Yeah, and a little Katy Perry too. Oh, yeah. Three of our favorites. The place that we came to was another recommendation from a follower on Instagram and they really came through. It's called Dorchester Brewing and this place is pretty freaking incredible. First off, everyone here is so crazy nice from the moment we walked in. Second off, the place is just grand. And it's so incredibly well designed, so like warehouse-like and really rustic. They really have some patience up there. We took like 20 minutes just to order these beers because Allison couldn't seem to pick any. <laughs> they said, oh, these two aren't available right now. And then she proceeded to pick those two. <laughs> Y'all, it's been a long day. There's one I'm particularly excited about. This is the Pumpkin Nitro Stout. 
Not a typical type of beer I would drink, but I mean, in tiny pours, I would do it. Oh my gosh, that's thick. That might be one of the thickest beers I've ever drank. Ooh, it's good. Are it's really you gonna good. finally put hair on this chest? You know, <laughs> you know, it's not super pumpkin-y, but it is almost kind of like fragrant and fruity. And very, very thick. You guys, they have a, a board game cabinet over here. And first off, we were both immediately drawn <laughs> to this. We have no idea what the heck game this is. I don't know, but I really like the colors and design. We're gonna Google it and play it. Yeah. Okay, it turns out this is cribbage, <laughs> which we tried to learn, but the rules were way too complicated. So there was what is a lot of reading involved. So what did we do instead? Instead, we played Beer Smart. Tap your knowledge. Get it like a beer tap? Question. The foamy residue on the inside of a glass of beer, this little fella right here, is called A, long legs, B, wrist, C, drippings, or D, Belgian lace. I got this one right, total guess. And the answer is Belgian lace. I think it's a good description of it because it's it always is. got like the X pattern, you know? Yeah. See, we're learning while we're drinking. This is fantastic. We're officially on the road. We've left Boston, y'all. We're just jamming to some Christmas music. Yeah, Christmas is coming so oh, soon. That's how the volume. <laughs> you turned my heat up <laughs> all the <Yeah>. way. <laughs> You know, we are kind of in love with Boston, you guys. We visited a couple times, and this time we really had a chance to just, you know, kind of act like we were living there. And we really like it. It's one of our favorite cities, I think. Yeah, I'm a little sad we haven't gone up north to explore a bit more, but we love the Back Bay area. And of course, downtown is pretty unbeatable with all the history and amazing architecture and everything. Yeah, and obviously there is still so much more for us to see. We only scratched the surface. And I know we did a lot of touristy stuff today, but. For us, that stuff is really fun. We really yeah. like history, and that's one of our favorite things about Boston is there's so much history there. So we really had a blast, and we can honestly recommend everything that we did today, especially the ship museum where we got to reenact the tea party. That, that was, was so fun. awesome. <laughs> also, I'm not sure if we mentioned it, but we canceled our trip to England. Yeah, I think we've already updated y'all, but this is in lieu of our trip to England. We just hung out in Boston. Now we're actually headed to New York, to the Hudson Valley area. We have a very cool place we're gonna be staying. All right, goodbye adventures. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>